During the summer, the air quality in lots of big cities can get pretty bad. But even in the last month, news sources have reported that places like Denver, Indianapolis, and New York have been exposed to higher than normal air pollution. For a few hours on August 7th, 2021, Denver's air quality was the worst in the world, well above the particulate matter exposure levels recommended by the World Health Organization. Colorado has struggled um, with air quality throughout the summer. Recently, our air quality issues have been compounded by the wildfire smoke. Wildfire smoke from Western states managed to make its way across the country, affecting cities like Indianapolis and New York. The fires in California, the fires that have been going on in Idaho and Montana and Oregon, right, all of that smoke has also come through Colorado. A very common thing that happens in Colorado is the smoke comes in from the north and then comes down on the east side of the Rockies. It was a particularly thick blanket of smoke. The visibility dropped to below three miles, pretty much. But if you lived in Denver and weren't watching the news, you might not realize the thick haze actually contained smoke. You typically can't smell the smoke from fires that are more than a day upwind because the compounds that are in smoke that have a smell, they degrade within one day in the atmosphere. But that doesn't mean it's okay to breathe it in. Wildfire smoke is composed of thousands of different things. There's what we call particulate matter, and then there's gases in the smoke. One of the major constituents is carbon monoxide. There's also hazardous air pollutants, things like benzene, toluene, formaldehyde, acetaldehyde, hydrogen cyanide. Those are all enhanced when wildfire smoke comes to town. Smoke from wildfires isn't the only thing to blame for bad air quality. Other sources of air pollution are things like cars, power plants, and even wood-burning fireplaces. These in turn can contribute to VOCs, or volatile organic compounds. These are gases that are emitted from certain solids or liquids. They can lead to another dangerous pollutant, ozone. Ozone is a secondary pollutant, so it's not emitted directly. It's formed in the atmosphere when nitrogen oxides react in the presence of VOCs. We have a lot of oil and gas development, so that's a large source of VOCs. Major sources of nitrogen oxides include vehicles, uh, transportation, power generation. So there's certainly plenty of human pollution sources to cause the ozone problem that we have. Um, and that's routine in summer. Ozone formation in the upper atmosphere is good. It protects living things from much of the sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation. But ground level ozone can get in your lungs and cause the muscles in your airways to constrict and trap air in the alveoli. This can lead to health effects like coughing or difficulty taking deep breaths. Sunlight drives the production of ozone from VOCs and hot temperatures speed that up. So summer generally means more ozone and an abundance of ozone means worse air quality, even without wildfire smoke. The wildfires that we're seeing now absolutely have a climate component to them. And we really can't solve the wildfire challenges you know, fully without uh, addressing climate change. Absolutely, climate change will exacerbate air pollution issues, no doubt about it. Whether the pollutants are from car exhaust, ozone production, or the particles from wildfire smoke, they can all make their way into your lungs. If you're breathing in poor air quality, the symptoms that you can feel might include cough, shortness of breath, fatigue, and just generally not feeling the greatest when you take that deep breath. Air pollution can cause a lot of problems to our body. People who are surrounded by air pollution and grow up in areas where air pollution is heavy, they're going to develop symptoms of asthma, symptoms of emphysema, and that's an issue. To complicate things, air quality disparities often align with socioeconomic disparities. So let's just think about for a minute, where is it cheapest to live? So it's cheapest to live in areas that are next to freeways. You're gonna have more pollution, which leads to significant particulate matter and other particles within the air that are gonna to lead to inflammation within your lung. And so people who are don't have enough or who don't have the ability to afford to live in other areas are also going to be the people that are most diseased. Those neighborhoods have a high prevalence of asthma, especially childhood asthma. 
So if the air quality around you is bad, what can you do to stay safe? If you have the privilege of not having to go outside that day, stay indoors, all right? Close your windows. Make sure that the air circulating in your house remains healthy. If you're gonna be outside, make it a quick visit. Wear a mask, it's a physical barrier, so you don't get as abundant an amount of these molecules that's gonna lead to some of the inflammation and some of the healthcare effects that can be seen as very bad. I think the most important thing is to be able to develop a relationship with local healthcare entities to make certain that you're well taken care of, or at least your illnesses are managed. I think one message that's really important to get across is that people should be checking their air quality daily like they're checking the weather and making personal choices uh, based on the air that they're breathing. People should be concerned about this because there are real health impacts and quality of life impacts.